Uh, joining me now on the Nielsen Network is Sadia Zahidi, who is the Managing Director, Head of New Economy and Society at the World Economic Forum. Thank you very much for your time. Um, you know, Sadia, let's start with the fact that for 15 years, this Global Risk Report has been highlighting a pandemic as one of the major risks. Where do we stand now as you uh, put forward the risks for 2021? Give us an overview from your perspective. Sure. Uh, so, you know, as you pointed out, uh, one of those major global risks that had a low likelihood but a very high impact um, across our economies and societies, that risk became reality over the course of 2020. And so our sense as we publish this report is that it's even more important to highlight what might be some of those other um, uh, events that may occur, whether those are high likelihood, high impact, or perhaps slightly lower likelihood, but equally high impact. It's important for us to understand it because understandably, right now the focus is on this pandemic and dealing with it. But if we don't look a year out, two years out, five years out, and 10 years out, we are going to find ourselves caught off guard again. And that's what the report's really trying to get to. Environmental risks, obviously coming out at the top of the risks that we need to be aware of as we look forward. Can you give us just a sense of how important it is for us to take into account environmental risks and no longer pay homage to the changes that we need to make to ensure that the environment we live in is sustainable for the long term? So it's very clear when we ask risk chief risk officers, global risk experts, various leaders um, from across the world, there were about 650 of them that we surveyed for this report. Their sense is 10 years out, the highest impact and highest likelihood risk is still climate change and the biodiversity loss and the other concerns that go along with it. In the short term, it's very clear that societal fractures, unemployment, and a digital divide are going to get in the way of the kind of global cooperation that's needed to try to address those long-term risks. And somewhere in the midst of these timeframes, so not the next couple of years, but not quite the eight to 10 years out, but in the midst of this are likely to be the economic knock-on effects that happen from today's um, current situation. And that is the possibility of asset price bubbles, the possibility of debt crisis, the possibility of um, state collapse. So those are some of the other things people are concerned about. So I think with all of this on the agenda, it becomes even more critical to remember that there's no vaccine for climate change that we can try to work for eight to 10 years out. It's only now that we still have a small window of opportunity to take some action for that major risk, but we have to balance it with all of these societal concerns. We do have to take into account unemployment. We have to take into account the disillusionment of youth. We have to take into account the technological divides that currently exist, both for those that don't have enough access to technology and for those that do, but where there are major challenges around misinformation and technology governance and privacy. So those that, that's the entire set of things that policymakers need to take into account. And I am fairly optimistic in the sense that we do have a unique window right now to address these challenges. When our current reality and the COVID-19 pandemic that obviously is upon us globally. I'm going to latch on to that word optimistic. Tell me why you are optimistic and uh, certainly uh, give us that sense of hope. In some sense, with this current situation, we have an opportunity to build back a different kind of economy. And that new kind of economy can from the beginning build into it better prospects for youth to be employed. It can build into it better education systems. It can build into it better health systems. And it can build into it sustainability and a greener economy, in particular greener energy. Now to put all of those things together, we're not necessarily talking about governments taking on endlessly uh, more debt. We're actually talking about building a wholly new economic system, which 
um, can be done through incentives from governments can be done through changes to tax policy can be done through changes on subsidies it can be done through a new approach to industrial policy so essentially much more mission driven government as the economist um, mariana mazzucato calls it and at the same time there's a huge role for the private sector in this these can be market-based solutions to better health to better education to better social safety nets to greener technology and to ensure that we're essentially driving society and the economy forward in a very different way. This window will not come up again and again. And there is a short period in which we can build this new kind of economic system. And I think some governments that are forward looking are starting to think that way. They're starting to lay down now their agendas for a more inclusive and sustainable recovery and essentially transform their economies. Others are not. And that's where I think the focus has to be. Sadia, thank you so much for giving us that overview of the global risk report for 2021 as uh, put forward by the, the World Economic Forum as part of the Davos agenda. It's been a pleasure chatting to you, Sadia Zahidi, who is Managing Director, World Economic Forum, New Economy and Society. Thank you so much.